All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are taking a look at another fun mod, this time in the form of Nav Utilities by forum user Kujiman. And this is a very cool mod for the pilots out there. Now, if you know me, you know that I am an awful pilot in this game, and so any help that I can have I will take and these instruments that the nav utilities adds into the game well they they are quite helpful I, I doubt they'll still be able to help my pathetic flying ability but nonetheless let's just jump into a you know the little Aris 3a and take a look at this nav utilities mod and what it adds into the game specifically is a flight in or a instrument landing system rather and a horizontal situation indicator now it comes in two flavors uh, that are well combined together the standalone and a roster prop monitor so i'm just going to use the standalone today because i like flying outside of the cockpit but if you like flying in the cockpit they have a raster prop monitor compatible system for this uh, built in and it is it is quite nice but for me i like flying outside so if we open up the hsi window we get this lovely thing here and we can also open the companion options which will be useful for selecting runway as well as glide slope and well Basically, this is an instrument landing system, the type that you would see in an actual plane, uh, just kerbalized, and it is, it's quite useful. A lot of good information, of course, information that still isn't too helpful to me because of my, my horrible skill level, but <laughs> nonetheless, it is a, a very, very useful tool, and if you are a good pilot out there, uh, this could be an invaluable tool for getting yourself to where you need to go. Now, first bit that we'll talk about on it is, of course, uh, the top here where we have the runway. Right now, it is selected to Kerbal Space Center 09, which, of course, is the 09 right here. So that is if you are heading east and you want to land. If you're heading west, it'll be KSC 270, which we can switch to there. Or, or yes, 27, not 270, rather. And then we also have the runway on the island at 09 and 27, and there is also the KSC, the VAB East Helipad and West Helipad. So if you uh, do like your vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, you can have uh, those. Now there is also a config file in the folder for this mod, so if you want to add additional runways, you can. I don't know how that would work, but uh, if uh, you are the type to add in other sites, eh, you could add in runways there. Now the next part of it is the glide slope, and this is basically the ideal path you should be coming in on. Now this is adjustable. In real life, the glide slope is basically the slope that you should land that would help you avoid any obstacles that are in front of the runway, like say there's buildings not too far away from the runway, uh, you would come in at a higher glide slope to avoid them. Now we don't really have anything for quite a long ways. I mean, if you consider those mountains an obstacle, that's, oh God, what, 50, 60 kilometers back that way? You're, you're probably safe. So we can go with a low glide slope. But say if you did have uh, one of the various mods that adds in buildings to the Kerbal Space Center or to the rest of the world, you can adjust the glide slope to a much steeper glide slope, and this goes from 3 to 25, and I believe it goes in yeah, sort of 2 to 2.5 degree intervals. Oh, or up to 5. Okay, interesting. So... It, it doesn't go in regular intervals, but sort of larger, useful intervals, and it stops at the 25. Now, again, the config file for this mod, you can add additional glide slopes if you please. And that would be useful if you have a brick of an aircraft that comes down quite quickly, because that is far more of the use for Kerbal Space Program. Since we don't really have buildings to dodge, you may just have a plane that glides really well, so a 3% glide slope is perfect. Or you may have a brick of an aircraft, and who knows, maybe you need a 30 or 35 degree glide slope, you could add that into the config file. Now the next bit here is the course, now that is the course of the runway, and we have our heading, which is what way we're facing. 
the oh what exactly is the correct term for the this uh, part here under heading oh uh, trying to remember but basically I'll, I'll think of the word hopefully in a moment uh, back course the back course there we go I believe that's correct that is what you need to turn to get onto the proper heading for the runway and then down here we have the distance to the runway and this these along the sides that shows you whether you are in the glide slope so that you know that you are in that 3% sort of slope on into the runway and uh, the lines here of course the large rectangle in the middle is the runway itself then we have uh, these magenta lines and there's uh, two sets you have a small magenta line there and there and then the one in the middle and basically the ones on the top and bottom are matched with the sort of heading or that you need to be on and the one in the middle is your actual position with the runway so we'll see that when we get up in the air in a moment here and if we're to the left of the runway that bar will be over to the left if we're to the right of the runway it'll be over on the right and that's essentially how that works and this whole system it basically moves around like any compass would so we can see our heading and then we have these three lights here your outer marker middle marker and oh it internal marker or oh no inner inner there we go inner marker and basically the inner marker is the end of the runway middle marker is sort of a sort of middle out distance and the outer marker is the outermost distance that really once you pass this should you should be lined up with the runway <laughs> at least i should <laughs> by middle you should really be lined up nicely and if you're not lined up by the time the inner marker flashes well, you need to just turn around and try again. So, <laughs> let's actually power up our plane here and launch ourselves. So you can see all of this in action. Now, the fun part for these lights, the outer, mid, and inner warnings, they not only have lights, but they also do have sound indicators as well. You'll get a nice little warning. Oh, I forgot that this plane takes off quick. <laughs> okay. There we go, let's bring our uh, gears in, and let's switch to KSC 2.7, because that means we'll be heading back this way towards the 2.7, heading west to do our landing. And you'll see that we need to be on a course of 270, we're currently heading 90, and we need to head on a bearing of 270, so that's what we need to change to. Now we already passed the inner marker as we were taking off, so you probably didn't hear or see that. I kind of saw a quick flash, but nothing too much. We'll pass the mid marker here soon, I believe. And the distance here, that distance is in kilometers. So I think maybe once we hit 10, maybe the middle marker will go. Oh, and I'm actually approaching our slope that we need. As you can see, it is getting into where it needs to be. Oh, we've hit the outer marker. Oh, we already passed the mid marker. But there you heard that warning sound that uh, tells you that you are indeed at that certain distance point. Now, I instead of turning, well, actually, we probably should. Let's turn so you can see how the whole gauge interacts. Moves around like any compass should. And oh, oh god, okay. My flying, on the other hand, does not work as flying should. <laughs> and uh, you can see on the gauges here that we are currently off uh, to the, uh, the side of the runway. We're not lined up in the slightest, and we are way too low for our glide slope. If the triangles are up high, that means you're too low and you need to go up and vice versa, because of course flight controls tend to be inverted. And let's see if we can get ourselves back on. You can see that line coming in because we are getting closer to where we need to be on the runway. And there we go. We are almost lined up. I need to sort of go back this way a bit. And I am far too low for the glide slope there. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, my. Okay, my horrible flying ability is coming into play here. Let's throttle down. And we are way off to the side of the runway here. So it is not going to be good for us. Though I'm intrigued. That line, I'm pretty sure, should be on the other side. Oh, we just passed the mid marker. 
Oh, yeah, we ain't landing on this one, but uh, who was really surprised by that with my flying? Uh, but yeah, you can see how all the gauges and everything interact as you come in, and it's, it's quite nice, and if you were an actual good pilot, you probably would have been able to land that, and we are once again off to the side of the runway. And that flips around since we have now passed it. And if we switch back to KSC, or KSC rather, 09, there we go. We are now on a heading of 271. We need to go on a bearing of 89 to get back to the course of 90. And oh, Hill, I was looking at the <laughs> instrumentation. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we are. We are. Uh, out in the mountains. Let's just do a flip here. Oh my god, my SAS. I'm turning off the SAS. I do not know why, but I'm still having troubles with that. I've been... I think I need a new keyboard. I think that's what the issue is. I My SAS just kind of... Oh, we're going to crash and die. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I, I think there's something with my keyboard that keys are getting stuck and causing the SAS to go haywire. But if we revert to launch... <laughs> Okay, and we will just sort of go up in the air again. I probably won't be able to land this thing. Well, oh my god, I instead of hitting the brake, I turned on the landing gear. Oh, one of those days, folks, one of those days. There we are, start up the engine. And it actually seems to have reset these, which is intriguing. I haven't had that happen before. Let's get ourselves back up into the air. Oh my, there we are. <laughs> And one of the fun things here, I didn't mention this earlier, you can rescale this, so if you do want to uh, make it much larger, you can in fact do so. Now, of course, if you are using the raster prop monitor version of this, it'll just be in the screen, but of course, it's still usable. You can zoom in and out doing it that way. And if we change, ah, there we go, the Island 09, so it's telling us we need to turn 122. So we need to head on a bearing of 1, 2, two. There we go. Okay. Okay. There we are. There we are. I'm not even going to attempt landing this because you all know how that will go from the previous, previous landing. Uh, but yeah, th this is a really cool, useful mod. If you, if you do like space planes in this game, I would say that this is invaluable. And if you are a crappy pilot like me, it's also useful. I mean, I definitely wasn't going to land back there, back there, but uh, I did get closer than I normally get to landing. <laughs> I really like, my favorite part of it is the glide, uh, the glide slope, because it really does help you maintain a, sort of the right slope down towards the runway, because that's usually my biggest problem. I never know if I'm too high or too low for the runway. Uh, in some of my old episodes of this, of uh, my original Kerbal Space Program series, I crashed into that uh, sort of cliff face right before this runway multiple occasions. And so the glide slope would have helped me a lot with that, as long as I could keep with it. And lining up with the runway, that's also useful too. And, well, distance and all of that is extraordinarily useful. I love the outer, middle, and inner marker indicators. It's a nice touch. It's not exactly necessary, but it's, it's a good touch for the system. And basically warns you, oh crap, I really should have this thing lined up by now. And of course, gives you the elevation of the runway so you know that you should be at 134 meters or roundabout to land. Which we definitely aren't being at, <laughs> oh my, 700 meters now. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just cool, it's great information. And even if you don't want to use Raster Prop Monitor, it has this wonderful standalone version that is used with the toolbar system. So you do need the toolbar, but hey, you should have the toolbar by now. So many mods use that thing, and it is just glorious. But yeah, we're, we're not actually going to land here. I'm just kind of going by the runway so you guys can see how all of this stuff changes with it. And it is... It is great. And actually, we're... Oh, we were lined up decently. Middle marker, there we are. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a fun mod. Definitely worth a look, and if you would like to give it a go, you can check it out from the link in the description. Give it a download, and uh, the mod creator has been very useful and even has links in his forum post to uh, 
raster prop monitor versions that are useful with this because not every raster prop monitor will be compatible. So he has like the Hayamoto Kerbal Space Industries cockpits in there, links to that so that you can use those. And uh, so everything you need can be found in that forum post. And I hope you do check this out. It is it is quite fun. And uh, you pilots out there, you will probably enjoy this thing. Oh, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this episode where today, once again, we have taken a look at Nav Utilities by forum user Kujiman. And of course, I hope you come back for the next episode where we take a look at another interesting mod. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one. I'm going to try and land this thing again, but it's not going to go well. See you later, guys.